What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. We're going to be talking about Chucky in this video here today, the Child's Play franchise and what I could see happening next or what I actually would like to see happening next. Honestly, in the inevitable next movie we get, we know that yesterday we learned that Chucky is canceled. Not again, a shock to anyone who is just using common sense and following all the things and just staying in the know when it comes to their ratings. Their ratings Apparently, we're averaging around 200,000 to 300,000, maybe sometimes over 600,000 per episode across the networks. That's terrible. So if that was the highest rated show on the network, what does that say about the other shows? That's that's terrible. That's not an investment that the networks are going to want to keep up with, especially if the cost of producing the show is rising and you're not even bringing in over a million viewers. Fucking trash, bro. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to talk about what could be going down or what I would like to see go down in a film from Don Mancini, if he's at the helm, and how this could start to appeal to not only the general audience, but diehard fans who have been around since day one. So, I know a lot of you also want Chucky to go back to their roots, aka the darker roots, still having that comedy, but tone down the wackiness. No blowing up Santa Claus, no blowing up the North Pole, tone down the supernatural stuff don't lean that far into it you want to see child's play one through three type of chucky and you're not wrong to want to see that for those people who want to see that you are not wrong for that so let's go over this idea i have about chucky going after mike norris and his family i've talked about it in the past but i just want to kind of flesh that out a little bit more so we know that caroline at the end of season three drove off with chucky and tiffany but whatever next film we get i could see wrapping up the storyline from the show and moving forward in some capacity, whether that be dialogue dumps, someone searching up something on the internet. I think the next film is going to be keeping that canon, but probably not addressing it too much. So the good guy creator and all of that foolishness can just be a distant memory. Let's pretend though, that universal has a plan to bring Chucky back to the big screen in a way that appeals to again, not just the general public, but diehard fans like some of you probably listening right now. It wouldn't be hard to believe that with the success of Megan, Universal could be interested in reviving their OG killer doll for the big screen. And if not, of course, they'll just put it on Peacock or something. A story that centers on a new family is likely the way to go. But this family being connected to an OG character in Charles Lee Ray's life, aka the man who gunned him down to kick this all off, will be a nice way to entice longtime fans. You can do an opening scene where we have a POV shot of the inside of a box being delivered to a house. Everyone, of course, assumes it's Chucky. You can hear a lot of heavy breathing. A man answers the door. It's revealed to be Mike Norris, but the package isn't Chucky. It's Tiffany, a nice subversion of our expectations, of course. Mike immediately recognizes the doll because over the years he stayed in the know on Chucky's legacy, even though he denied it after the events of Child's Play and Karen, like we know, doubled down on it. That got her sent to a psych ward. But he takes the doll inside and we see that Mike actually has a couple dolls inside his home that have been sent to him as a joke from those who know who he is, believe in the legacy of Chucky and just wanted to be funny neighbors. So he takes Tiffany inside. No issue. Assuming it was just another joke from a neighbor of his. Of course, later in the night, he's going to find out something else. Mike comes to learn this isn't some ordinary doll. It's alive. And Tiffany kills Norris for what he did to Chucky all those years ago. Thus concluding in some capacity, Chucky's promises to get Eddie and him no matter what. This can be a very terrifying opening scene. We're back to the darker roots. And then we can jump to Mike's niece, who has a family of her own, two kids and a husband. They also have just received the package, but there's this, the actual Chucky doll. The niece has kept her family away from Mike ever since her mom died and ever since Mike decided to come to terms with what happened with Chucky and stop lying to himself like he did after the events of Child's Play. His insistence that Chucky is real and Karen Barkley isn't crazy, that switch up drove a wedge between him and his family because for the longest time, that's what he was preaching to them. And that, of course, can be like some type of connective tissue that ties into the phone call we heard at the end of Curse of Chucky. Karen and Mike started to get close once Mike started to stop allowing himself to just be gaslit and come to terms with the fact that no, what you were facing was a killer doll. It's okay. 
So if it isn't clear by now, the niece doesn't believe in Chucky's legacy and neither does her kids or her husband. They don't even question where it all came from and just accept that maybe somebody knows they are related to Mike and wanted to be funny. So even though they aren't in touch with Mike, they know Mike gets mail from his neighbors sometimes, just like the doll that's now arrived at their porch. One of the kids takes a liking to Chucky. Weird shit happens around the house, at school, outside of school. Karen Barkley can be a target similar to Eddie Caputo in the original, except Karen lives, prompting Andy Barkley to return one last time. The niece's husband dies. Her child keeps blaming Chucky. No one believes the child. And of course, it escalates to the inevitable realization that Chucky is alive as usual. And then in some capacity, yes, throw in Nika, throw in Andy bring up the trio one or two members i don't think we need to have all three of them because it would it would feel stuffed i wouldn't even be against nika narrating this because to me what this would be in a perfect world is it would be the final film you can call it chucky friends to the end or friends to the end a chucky story i don't know child's play chucky's dead i don't know call, call it something <laughs> and the reason i would have nika narrating it possibly is just to again solidify that this is a story that's already occurred Nika has some sort of crucial aspect to the story or crucial role in the story. And when she appears down the road in the story, inevitably, she will tell us what has happened. She found Caroline. She got Caroline back to Lexi. Lexi, Devin and Jake are doing fine. We probably don't see them during this movie, though, if that's the route we take. But at least Nika can be a source to let us know how they're doing and that she actually did manage to track down the dolls, got Caroline but Chucky and Tiffany have been on the run ever since, and she's been tracking them and also staying in touch with the kids while they're in their new foster families, whatever the situation may be, while they complete high school. And she tracks down the doll inevitably with Mike's niece. Things unfold there. Andy gets in the mix, and this is where Chucky finally dies. This is where Chucky finally dies. In a perfect world, that is what I would do for a Chucky movie, I wouldn't mind seeing a story like this. And again, it would be back to the darker roots. You still have your comedy, funny one-liners in there. But what a lot of people are against right now is they feel that those of you who grew up with Freddy probably are the best people to compare this to. You feel like we're reaching that type of territory. Or maybe you think we already have, in which you have a villain who used to be scary and now it's not scary. But you'll have people who will argue, oh, well, Chucky was never scary. That's not what people mean. <laughs> I can myself admit I was never scared of Chucky. That's not necessarily what they mean. They're talking about the tone, the presentation, your intention. There feels like there is no intention to scare us right now. We want that back. A lot of people want that back and they are not wrong to want that back. You guys can let me know what you think about a story like this down in the comment section below. I also know that a lot of you do not want to see Don Mancini back and I can't blame you there either. I will say this. The reason Don Mancini likely isn't going anywhere is because Don Mancini likely has a right of first refusal because I do find it quite interesting that he's the only person that's been directing these movies over the past 20 years at this point. And that's probably because of a right, right of first refusal, meaning Universal probably has something with Don where they have to offer him the job first and he has to say no before others can be offered the opportunity because there's no way that Don is the only one who wants to write and direct Chucky movies. There's just no way. Him constantly doing it indicates to me that there's a possibility he has what's called, again, a right of first refusal. Look it up. Those of you who watch my Jeepers Creepers videos, you've heard me talk about right of first refusal before. And I'm starting to think that's what Don has, because it's just quite interesting that Universal, who owns the IP, keeps going back to Don. Don doesn't own Chucky. He just might have something in place that requires them to always go to him first. And he has to say no, but he never says no. I think Don honestly needs a co-writer and he probably shouldn't be directing the next film. Um, if he just cannot like help himself with, with this wackiness, people are tired of it, man. They're tired of it. They're not wrong to be. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notification, you can never miss a video in the description. I'll have links to my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews I'm going to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.